Hey guys, Lapeller back with another video. Today I'll be looking at the cheapest Giant Propel and comparing it to the most expensive Giant Propel. Now this was a viewer request, so I'm more than willing to make a video on the topic as I find it pretty interesting to compare the Propels myself. And we will also be looking at the mid-tier Propels and seeing where uh, those actually lie in the overall lineup of the Giant Propels. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. If you guys are a new viewer to my channel, I highly suggest you like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's going to help get these bikes in hand for me to actually test ride and give you guys an in thorough uh, review after riding it. I do see a lack of that on YouTube and I just find it that that's something that I can really fill that void. So if you guys do want to see that type of content, feel free to like the video and subscribe. For all my viewers and subscribers that are watching the video and have already liked and are subscribed, I just want to give a big thank you. You guys are helping the channel grow, which is going to make me make better content and just make more videos on this type of uh, subject. So I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already uh, followed me on Instagram and follow me on Strava, that really helped the overall growth of my presence on social media, which will just help me get brands uh, to reach out to me and get these products and review cycling products in general and in the not so distant future. So, you know, it's really important that I say this because that's the only way that the content is going to get better. So let's officially get into looking at these propels. Now we are currently on the giant website and we're looking at the propel advanced SL one disc from 2019 and that retails for 7,665 USD. Now, the reason why I'm showing you a 2019, even though we're going to look at the 2020s is because I actually have a video on my channel uh, of me building this exact propel. So I will link it in the description, but if you guys do want to see this bike being built, I built it myself. So uh, just it's important because yet again, not only do I have experience building these bikes, but I also test ride them and have ridden them. So, um, you know, I'm very qualified to make these types of videos, but I just wanted to say that right now. So after the video or even right now, if you want to pause it and watch that uh, bike being built, I think it's a pretty cool uh, video to actually see the process uh, that usually goes on before you buy a bike. So that's just really important. Now let's look at the Propel Advanced One Disc. Now this is the cheapest Propel that Giant offers. Um, it's 4,300 USD. Now the bike is full carbon fiber and it has all mechanical uh, Altegra and this has hydraulic Altegra as well. So you know, for this price range, you're getting a pretty good level entry uh, race bike, uh, aero bike in specific. So if you guys are not familiar, I will explain it quickly. The Propel is Giant's aero bike, meaning that if you're looking for aero gains, if you're looking to get some free speed, um, you know, the Propel is the Giant uh, aero bike. And it's funny because, you know, there was a video where I finally realized they call it the Propel because it propels you forward. So I think it's a, you know, a very cool aero bike. I love the design. The ride quality can be a little bit harsh depending on what type of terrain you ride in, but it just depends on what type of riding you plan on doing. And it does come with Giant's own SLR uh, one carbon rims. So we'll look at the specs really quick. And basically it has everything that's proprietary to the Propel. So the Propel integrated uh, handlebar and stem, which makes it look really clean. Um, now full Altegra, like I said, uh, Altegra hydraulic, it comes with an 1130 rear cassette at the back along with uh, an uh, uh, Altegra crank set. That's a 5236. So a semi-compact crank set. And uh, it comes with a 42 millimeter uh, SLR one arrow disc on the front and on the rear it has a 65 millimeter carbon rim. So that's really nice because basically what they're doing is that they're making the airflow, uh, you know, you cut through the air at the front and in the back you get more arrow because the, f the flow of air is going around the bike. Um, just because if you have two uh, deep dish rims, which are 65 millimeters, it can push you um, around in the crosswind. So it's important that, you know, you have a smaller one on the front, which is 42 and then a 65 of the back. And I do, I do find that makes a big difference in terms of overall ride quality. And these are tubeless as well. So, you know, I think it's a great value. If you're looking for an aero bike, you're getting full Altegra um, and a carbon bike along with uh, carbon rims. So now let's look at the Propel Advance Pro 1. So this is when you get into the mid tier of what the Propel is. So this is a full carbon bike, just like the one we looked at uh, with SLR one rims as well with a 42 at the front and a 65 at the back. Now you're getting a full Altegra DI2, meaning electronic uh, shifting along with um, Giant's own dual sided power meter slapped onto the Altegra crank set and basically everything that you would see in the Propel. Now, in terms of weight guys, you know, these weights, um, I will link if you guys do want to see or I'll just say it right now. The easiest way to see the weights for yourself are on Giant Japan uh, 
Giant Japan's website. Uh, they don't post the weights here. Then again, even the Giant Japan website isn't as accurate because it really depends on what size. They don't tell you what size uh, they uh, measure the bikes in. So usually if you really want to know the weight of the bike, I just suggest going to your local bike shop, getting them to weigh the bike if they have it built up or if they have it on display. Uh, that's the best way. And at the same time, guys, uh, you know, if you're racing to the point where you're doing some hilltop climbing or that type of stuff where you know saving grams is so important and i totally understand it but in general when people really get you know uh specific for the weights of the bike i just find it funny because i'm just gonna say it right now and i don't want to be the person that annoys everyone because uh, i've been there where i was like okay i get it uh from teammates and whatnot but the best weight savings you can make is always on yourself and i've talked about that on my channel i just want to make that important because going future with these videos uh, yes, when I have these bikes in hand, I will weigh them, obviously, but, uh, you know, it's not worth really going to the depths of finding the weights because I just find it not the most important thing uh, to talk about. It's more important to talk about the specs and what you actually get on the bike rather than the weight. So I just want to put that, that's my way of thinking about things. Um, so let's look at the specs you get on this one. So full Altegra um, DI2 by Shimano, hydraulic, you have an 1130 rear cassette, which is nice. Um, you get a 5236, so semi-compact uh, compact, uh crank set along with giant's own power meter so that's really nice at this price range now you're getting a dual side power meter along with di2 and uh same thing with the giant slr one aero disc uh composite wheel system so 42 on the front 65 like i said i just said and basically tubeless tires as well now one thing that i just want to note so you guys uh know is that the slr ones when we go to the slr ones as you as you go up in the propels right with the wheels the lower the number the wheels get lighter so meaning that the wheels from the slr ones that come on the slr um sorry that come on the propels that are uh pro one or even the advanced one the wheels that come on the pro zero uh the slr wheel system uh is a little bit lighter and they have better hubs so I, i'm pretty sure on the pro zeros correct me if you, i'm wrong in the comment section i'm pretty sure they are dt swiss hubs i'm not too familiar with the hubs on this one but uh you won't notice the difference like on both hubs, it's not that significant. I couldn't tell the difference between riding all the different hubs. Now, when we go into the most expensive ones, you might see a significant difference because the price is very significant, but between uh, the Pro Zero and the Pro One in terms of the wheel system, because that was a question that one of my subscribers had going into this video, you won't see a significant difference. So I just wanted to put that out there now. Um, so now looking at, so that's a, still a great value. Just wanted to finish up with the Propel Advanced Pro One disc. For 6,100, you're getting a really good bike. Now, looking at the Propel Advanced Pro Zero Disc Force. So now we're getting a full, uh, same carbon fiber frame, uh, wheels as well, 42 in the front, 65 in the back. But now you're getting ETAP, meaning that this is SRAM, uh, all wireless. So on DI2, you actually still have wires that are hidden. So it's a lot cleaner, but uh, this one's full wireless and it's SRAM and it's 12 speed. So that's the biggest difference where these were both 11 speed uh, bikes. Now you're getting to 12 speed. So for 7,000, so you're paying an additional $900, I would say primarily for ETAP, uh, which can be nice if you if you guys do like riding ETAP. I personally have ETAP. I'll be doing a review on ETAP pretty soon, but I'll give you guys my thoughts. Um, so you get ETAP access, like I said, 12 speed. So you have a 1020 on the back with uh, uh, 4835. So you might think that's like a subcompact uh, crank set, but because it has an extra gear, it's basically a very similar ratio on the old propels we just looked at because it's 12 speed. So don't be concerned too much. Basically, they're, they're pretty much, you'll get the same riding experience just once for 12 speed, once for 11 speed. So in terms of the number of teeth on the rear cog and also on the crank set, uh, it compensates for one another. Now, like I said, rear has 65 millimeter uh, carbon rims and the front has 42 and these are tubeless as well. So basically the only thing that's different from this one to this one is you're going to e-tap. Now the most expensive propel is the propel uh, advanced SL zero disc red. So you're getting the top tier. So this is, uh, you know, this would be equivalent to Altegra. And, um, when you get into SRAM red ETAP, that's equivalent to Durace. If you guys are familiar, I also made a video on my channel talking about the different, uh, group sets. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, feel free. Um, but also just want to touch upon these colors. Uh, these colors that giant, this one's a little bland, but this color, I really, really like the color. And this red is like a, ch a cherry apple red. I really do like it. And this one, I also uh, am a fan. I like the grading changes that giant has been doing recently. I wasn't a big fan with their old uh, color schemes that were very, um, 
very uh, pop of color. It was very uh, vibrant. I didn't like that. I like I like smooth gradient changes of color. Uh, usually then I'm very plain as well, so I don't really uh, like that much color, but I do like these green changes. It's it's nice on the eyes. So what makes this bike so expensive is that you're getting uh, the super light giant frame, meaning that this is the Propel super light with the integrated seat post, meaning that, you know, on these bikes, you actually can take the seat post out and adjust it. This one, you would actually have to cut it. Uh, and in the video where I built the 2019 version, we actually cut it. So if you guys want to see that, I'll be in the, it'll be in the description. So, you know, we, you really have to make sure your size is properly because you have to cut the seat post and then put the clamp on it. Um, other than that, you know, if you're looking for weight savings, uh, it can be quite significant to, I, I would say one or two pounds when comparing it to these propels. But then again, I've already touched up on the topic where I don't think it's that necessary. Like I said, you can always make better, um, gains by losing weight yourself and becoming a fitter cyclist. At least that's how I think of, uh, buying bikes. Um, now you get the ETAP, um, that's, um, red. So from the force, which I have compared to this. Um, this one's going to be a lot nicer in terms of just, uh, lightness and how smooth it shifts. One thing I also forgot to notice is that, um, the Propel Advanced Pro Zero Force has its own quark power meter. So it's no longer the giant one. It's made by quark, which SRAM owns. So it also comes with a power meter. I just forgot to say that. And this one also comes with a quark, uh, integrated power meter as well. Now, the one thing that's really, uh, everyone loves seeing on the most expensive Propel is that Giant's own Kadex branded wheels, which are Giant's premium wheels. So if you're not familiar, Kadex is a sub brand of Giant and they only make premium products. So just from what I know from uh, the Kadex brand is that the Kadex wheels are super, super premium. So they're even lighter than the SLR Zero um, rims, which is pretty significant. So even though this is a 42 and a 65, let's just confirm that. So yeah, so even though this is a 42 millimeter and this is a 65 millimeter, um, these, th this wheel set is still lighter than two 42 millimeter SLR one. So that shows you how uh, good these wheels are built. Um, the other, uh, flex that Kadex is giving on this bike is that the um, spokes are actually carbon fiber and it's just bladed carbon fiber spokes. It's just top tier stuff. So if, if you are into wheels, uh, and you're looking for premium wheels, the KX brand is what you get. So looking at the specs, it's SRAM, uh, ETAP, Axis, 12 speed, hydraulic uh, with um, a 1020 at the back, 4835, just like the other uh, Force ETAP bike we looked at here, very similar in terms of gearing. And you're getting, is this tubeless? Um, uh, these are tubeless. Uh, ready rim. So this is the Kadex Aero Disc wheel system. So Kadex offers their wheel systems in tubulars and tubeless. And um, yeah, this bike looks nice. So if we, if I have to give my overall thoughts now, just between the cheap uh, Propel to the expensive one, I would say you're not going to see it that significant in terms of performance other than when you get to the point where you're doing some top tier racing or some top tier crit racing. I would say for circuit racing, which is like a short uh, road race, you'll see a big improvement with having the super light frame because one or two pounds can make a significant difference if you're already super lean and super fit on the bike when comparing this bike. So definitely I would say for myself, um, I, I could tell it there's a big difference between how this performs and how this performs. But for the majority of riders, uh, you won't see a significant difference in terms of performance because uh, you really do have to put the, the kilometers in. So that's why I always suggest to you follow the Instagram and Strava because I post a lot of my rides on those sites. So if you guys want to see how much I ride, it's just going to help with the growth because I want to, I want you guys to have confidence that if I do get these bikes in hand, that I'll actually test ride them. So I just find it important because a lot of videos that I watch on YouTube, um, they're just talking about the specs and they don't really ride and you check their Strava and it says like 1000 kilometers for the whole year. I'm almost at 10,000 kilometers. Uh, I'm not saying that to toot my own horn or to boast. It's just, I want you guys to know, like if I really get the support from you guys and you guys want that content, I promise to deliver. So just my overall thoughts. Um, I think I, I would personally, I would, I would want to go with the Propel Advanced SL zero disc red. Obviously this bike is a dream bike but I would still be fine with the Propel Advanced One Disc. It pr pretty much hits everything I would say that you know a serious rider or uh, someone that wants to get into serious racing would need. You're getting the full carbon fiber frame that's aero, so that's really nice. Uh, in terms of the shape, it's the exact same shape. Uh, you're getting carbon rims, so in terms of um, lightness and um, how it cuts through the wind, you get that added benefit. Now, is it as light as K-Dex? No, but it's still gonna be really good. 
um, you get Altegra. Um, now red is going to be a little bit smoother. It's obviously wireless and it shifts uh, automatic. Uh, it's electronic where this one's mechanical. So there's a little bit difference there, but you won't, you won't get dropped just because you're on mechanical. So still this one's an amazing bike. And I just wanted to show you guys the comparison because a subscriber asked. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you guys like more content like this, feel free to comment in the comment section down below. I'm always eager to make a video or give you guys my opinion on any bike related matters. And a lot of future content is going to be coming out on this channel. I'm not even looking at bikes, just training videos, outdoor riding as soon as the weather gets better, uh, other cycling products, uh, some pro related content, uh, some story times from my cycling experiences. Um, and if you guys are interested in that, you know what to do. And until the next one, keep pedaling.